Uh, my name is Hiroyuki Tezuka. Uh, this is the second topic of today's seminar. The title is The Origin of Substructures in Intersolvent EPR or Bolon in Silicon. Here, you can see four EPR spectra uh, measured with a uh, 20th silicon sample. Uh, left to figure is a delta make one intersolvent transition, and right to figure is a delta make or two intersolvent transition. And the upper two figures are measured in 3.2 Kelvin, and lower two figures are measured in 1.8 Kelvin. So here you can see several features of these signals. First, uh, in all spectra, you can see fine structures at the center of broad line, like this. And you, you may notice that uh, the phase of the fine structure, uh, in case of, if you see the M1 intertwined transition, by decreasing the temperature, uh, the phase of substructure doesn't change. So, negative and negative. In contrast, if you see M2 transition, the phase of fine structure inverse from positive to negative. These interesting feature, features have, known, have been known for more than 30 years. However, the source of this fine structure have not been created. So, what is the origin of substructure? Uh, to obtain more information, uh, we prepared uh, 20 silicon samples uh, to see the actual nature of fine structures uh, by, by reducing the isotopically broadening. And we employed two kinds of spectrometer in different temperature region, like this. Uh, this is the first uh, prominent uh, experimental data. This figure is measured with small external stress. Um, upper figure, upper spectrum, is measured without external stress. And lower spectra is measured with, with small stress. So by applying external stress, uh, this broad line splits into two peaks, like this. In contrast, the central fine structure doesn't shift at all. So this result implies that uh, this fine structure needs the superposition of these two peaks to come out. Or in other words, substructure seems to be induced by simultaneous absorption. And as a second measurement, I, I measured uh, microwave power dependence. Uh, in this figure, x-axis indicates the microwave power milliwatt, and y-axis indicates the relative intensity of these two uh, absorption line. So from this figure, you can see clear uh, deviation between these two saturation curve. And if you consider the relationship between relaxation time and saturation curve, uh, you can see substructure has a apparently different relaxation mechanism. And from this result, uh, we conclude that this fine structure is induced by dynamical repopulation effect. So, uh, based on the uh, available experimental data, we try to develop a theoretical model to explain the fine structure. The name of our model is a double extension model. Here, you can see the schematic spectrum of EPR line of data-emigrant intersolvent transition. 
This blue line indicates the integrated form of the absorption, which is composed of specific two resonance, this one, this one. And they are split it by uh, internal small strain, uh, the width of delta, like this. Now, if you apply magnetic field corresponding to here, only this transition is induced. And if you apply magnetic field here, only this resonance is induced. Then, if you apply magnetic field as a center point, what will occur? First, only this uh, resonance can be induced. And then, if this spin population relaxes to here, the population difference between these two levels is increased like this. As a result, the total absorption can be suppressed like this. So, by assuming the double excitation, we can explain the suppression of the absorption. And similarly, if we think about the M delta M equal to inter-subband inter absorption, first, you apply magnetic field here, only this transition is induced. And if here, only here. And if you, magnetic, if you apply magnetic fields as a center point, first, this resonance is induced and reacts to here. Then, the population difference between these two levels is increased. After that, the total absorption can be enhanced like this. So we can say uh, the double excitation model can qualitatively explain the nature of substructures. And to study about this model more generally, we have developed a theoretical model. Uh, we have developed an uh, incoherent weight equation, like this. Uh, introducing all relaxation paths and all excitation paths. Uh, we assumed that the time evolution of population, this population distribution can be expressed by the summation of relaxation term and excitation term. A vector n is a population vector whose whose components are population of each level. And gamma is a relaxation matrix whose components are relaxation rate. And W is a excitation matrix whose components are excitation rate, like this. Uh, by using this equation set, we solved uh, based on the EPR conventional uh, condition, like this. And we obtained the steady state population distribution. And after that, we calculate the EPR intensity. And to think about the phase of a uh, substructure, uh, we calculate two kinds of uh, EPR intensity. First one is indicated as I double. Uh, this means the total absorption under the, under the situation of double excitation. And this term is uh, seen uh, in the direct summation of two single uh, absorption. And we assume that the final uh, phase of the substructure can be seen by seeing the, fa uh, the sign of I difference. So the, the, sub the difference between this value and this value. So if the sign of I difference is positive, the EPR should be a uh, sharp peak like this. In contrast, this sign, this sign is negative in the actual EPL, 
the dip should be observed. Uh, this is a typical result. Uh, in this figure, uh, horizontal axis is a normalized uh, realization parameter, gamma 1, 3, here. And vertical axis indicates a no normalized uh, realization parameter, gamma 2, 3, here. So these two parameters play important role in this model. <coughs> and counterplot is a normalized uh, value of I difference. So this shaded region means a negative region. And this red diagonal line means a relationship between gamma 1, 3 and gamma 2, 3 uh, estimated by the experimental data. So now, please look at right-hand size on this red line. In this region, uh, this region means a high temperature region because both of two uh, relaxation rate is larger than left size. So if you want to decrease the temperature, you, you can move to right, from right side to left side like this. So if you see M1 interband transition, you see a negative sign in all region. So this means that you can see the negative phase in experimental data like this. In contrast, if you see the M2 transition, at this point, the phase is inverse. <coughs> so this picture is corresponding to the change of the phase of substructure, so like this. So our calculation result uh, well agrees with experimental data. So from this result, we have concluded that the origin of the substructure is double excitation. Finally, let me summarize my presentation. First, the substructure seems to be not due to isotopes, but due to simultaneous double excitation. And secondly, the double excitation model can qualitatively describe the features of substructures. And as a future plan, I'm planning to introduce all the temperature dependence of each uh, relaxation parameters. And in addition, I will introduce the quantitative treatment with density matrix by considering the in, uh, coherent terms also. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention.